dedicated to the strength of the nation, now heard on more than 1,000 radio stations. Proudly, we hail. Yes, proudly we hail, starring Gail Patrick in Destination Found, a United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. And now here is your producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you. And greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your theater of stars, where your motion picture favorites appear in plays we know you'll enjoy. The always welcome motion picture performer, Gail Patrick, is our proudly we hail star. You'll hear Gail as Christine Stokes, who left the security of a university professorship to teach school in a country town and discovered both romance and herself in the story titled Destination Found. We'll raise the curtain on Act One right after this brief message from Wendell Niles. Toward a better tomorrow, a peaceful and tolerant world. That's the goal of your U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force. Your Army and Air Force is dedicated to maintenance of peace. For by establishment of efficient and effective armed forces, we are protecting our free way of life from aggression. And by our example, we set the standard of world harmony. That is the mission of your regular Army and U.S. Air Force today. And now, once again, our producer. The curtain rises on Act One of Destination Found, starring Gail Patrick as Christine Stokes. <laughs> The enrollment had begun at Farrar College for Girls, that highly exclusive college just outside New York City. And Farrar had a new arrival. She was Dr. Christine Stokes, the new professor of sociology. One of the girls in the administration building escorted her across the rich green campus to her room in an ivy-covered building. Christine walked gracefully, assuredly, as if she belonged there. I did belong there. I belonged there from the beginning. It felt good to walk on the grass, the same grass which had inspired Emily White, the famous poetess, composer Grace Charles, legislator Victoria Burns, and so many others. How proud my mother would have been. I couldn't help thinking back to Decatur, to how my mother would come home at night so tired, to that miserable apartment which shook as if it were part of the rattle of the trains that passed. <laughs> Is that you, Mother? <coughs> Yes, my dear. You still studying? Yes, Mother. Oh, you look so tired. Sit here, let me rub your head. Oh, thank you, dear. Were you busy at the restaurant? Yes, we were very busy. Very busy. Oh, uh, where is it getting us? What? In this horrible place we live in, the way we scrimp and save and count each penny, the way you have to work. Well, it's paying your father's debt. It's getting you an education. Is that worth everything? Worth losing every bit of pride we have left? Your education is important, my dear. Even if all we can manage is the teacher's college here in Decatur. Did you know your father and I once had you enrolled at Farrar College in New York? Did you really? Yes. Before your father passed away. I wanted it. I had a year there, you know. Gee, it must have been wonderful. Oh, I made a mistake not to finish, Christine. A woman must prepare herself for the future. That's why I want you to study Study hard. Oh, I love you very much. And I'm very grateful to you. I will work very hard. Yes, I... I know you will, my dear. Oh, Christine. Christine, quickly. Mother, mother, what's wrong? Help me to bed. Oh, mother. I... Mother, speak to me. Speak to me. Now, Christine, we've got to be practical about the whole thing. We've got to face that. I'm trying to be practical, Mrs. Peck. But that plot of ground is the most expensive in the cemetery. But my mother should be buried beside my father. Your father's isn't half paid for yet. Oh, I know how you feel. But cases like yours, that's what the welfare is for. What was left of my pride was swallowed and that reality was faced. I went back to my graduate work at Columbia University, and I worked harder than ever before. I was making a little money now and saving it. 
I began to realize the great wisdom of my mother's plans for me. One night at a party on Long Island, I met Rod Fitzgerald. I'd seen a picture of him on his yacht, Sea Swallow, and he seemed to have everything. Charm, wealth, position, and he liked me. You enjoying yourself, Christine? Oh, very much, thank you. I understand you're trying to get a professorship at Ferrari. Oh, that's right, I am. Well, why anybody would want that, I don't know, but as long as you do, I might be able to help you. I know the right people, you know. Oh, really? That would be wonderful. You know, you're very lovely. You're very nice. What do you like to do? Do you like these parties? Yes. Like to ride, sail? Uh-huh. Why? Oh, just wonder. You enjoy life very much, don't you? Let me put it this way, Chris. I'm on a one-way road to happiness. Want to join me? Do you want me to? I expect you to. We got around a lot from then on. Rod had a gorgeous home, his boat, and a string of polo ponies that he was so proud of. He gave me my ring one night. It was emerald cut and beautiful. Then my professorship came through. It seemed that everything my mother had planned for me had come true. To think, I was going to be part of Farrar. I returned to Decatur and had my mother moved where she belonged, next to my father. But again, I, I had that feeling of insecurity, of, of something missing. One week, my class and I visited a housing project. I saw the happiness of the people living there. That weekend, I rushed down to Rod in New York, and we caught a cab in the station. Rod, put your arms around me. Oh, of course, my darling. Tighter. How's that? Now kiss me. Oh, Rod. Rod. Hmm? I took my class to a small homes project this week. The homes were darling. <laughs> Good enough. Didn't step in any wet cement, did you? Oh, no, silly. I... Rod, remember once when you told me that that you were on a one-way road to happiness, that, that you wanted to take me along? Hmm. Let's make it complete. All right, darling. How? Let's get married. Uh, all right. When, Rod? When? Now, oh, let's not rush things. We'll we'll have to wait at least until after the Bahamas race. But we've, we've work to do on the sea swallow, you know. Besides, you, you've got to do some brushing up if you're going to crew for me. Yes, Rod. The Bahamas race during spring vacation was very thrilling. We finished third. But I returned to Farrar with that same old feeling of uncertainty. Rod had said we'd be married, but we never quite got around to it. As a matter of fact, on the day I completed one particular lecture, I hadn't heard from Rod for nearly two weeks. I was saying to my class, and so you see, this appeal from tiny rural communities such as Lark's Point for competent <coughs> school teachers is directed where it should accomplish the greatest good. For we of Farrar who are interested in teaching have family and background which have prepared us to get by on meager salaries. The need for teachers in these rural areas such as Lark's Point is great. The need should receive our consideration. Class is here. Hello, Bernice. Hello, Dr. Stokes. I caught the tail end of your lecture about Lark's Point. Oh, that's for a soul more rugged than mine. Any phone call for me? Afraid not. Oh. But uh, Mr. Rod Fitzgerald is here. Oh, is he? In the reception room. Oh, just a minute, Dr. Stokes. Hold still. Let me pull it out. What? A gray hair. You're much oh. too young for that. <laughs> I was hardly listening to her. Rod had come. There must be something very important or he would never have come. Maybe it was about our marriage. Oh, of course, he had decided that... Hello, darling. Oh, Rod. What, what brings you way up here? Well, I, I've made a sudden decision. Oh, what's that? Well, I'm flying down to Brazil next week with Mother, of course. I got a line in some excellent polo stock. Oh, Rod. Oh, it won't be for long, darling. We're, we're flying, of course. I'll, I'll only be there a week. But what about our plans? Well, you have your books, and there's summer school, or... Well, if you like, you can spend the summer in Newport. Newport I can't afford. But you have given me a wonderful idea. Hmm? What do you mean? I've just decided. I'm going to take a year's leave of absence here at Ferrara. I'm going to, to Lark's Point. You're good. <laughs> Lark's Point? Oh, what on earth for? To teach school. Oh, no. That's 
very funny. Well, what's so funny about it? <laughs> Darling, that's back in the sticks. That's the end of the world. And if it is? <laughs> oh, no. Well, look, look, I'll tell you. I'll give you about one week there. You say, Uncle, and come trotting back. He laughed at me. He didn't know I was only bluffing. He laughed at me when I wanted him to take me in his arms and say, Don't go, Chris. Please don't go. I, I couldn't bear to have you go that far away from me for so long. Rod's week in Rio grew into two weeks. Three weeks. Before I even had a phone call from him. Transatlantic operator. We're ready now with Rio. Go ahead, Miss Stokes. Hello? Chris? Hello, Rod. Oh, hello, darling. How are you? I'm fine. Oh, you're angry, aren't you, that I'm not back, as I promised. Oh, not really angry. Oh, oh darling, darling, I, I'm, I'm sorry I got stuck down here with Mother, but I'm, I'm coming home soon, dear. We'll, we'll be married as soon as I come. Oh, darling. <laughs> the Weavers want me to sail with them to Tahiti, but I'm just not going to let them talk me into it. Oh, please don't, Rod. No, I shan't. You're, you're not still planning to go up to Lark's Point, are you, darling? <laughs> no, darling, not if you're coming home. But Rod didn't get back. I had a cable from him. One word. Delayed. I was desperate. As time ran out, I, I decided to go through with my threat to go to Lark's Point. The train ride was long and dismal. What had happened to Rod? There'd been talk of storms. Had he been delayed? I was ready to turn back when I arrived at Lark's Point. Beg pardon, ma'am. But are you Miss Christine Stokes, the new school teacher? Yes, that's right. I've got a car here to take you up to school. That's very kind of you. My bags are over there. All right. Oh, by the way, here's a telegram that just came for you. Thank you. Christine Stokes, for our colleagues, forwarded to Lark's point. Huh? Have decided to go to Tahiti after all. See you in a couple of months. Love. Right. <laughs> something wrong, ma'am? Oh, no, no, it's all right. Is there anything I can do? Oh, I'm afraid there isn't anything anyone can do. Pause briefly from our story, Destination Found, starring Gail Patrick, to bring you an important message. You young men with adventure in your heart, have you considered a future as a pilot in the United States Air Force? In July, a new aviation cadet pilot training course starts, and here's how you can qualify. You must be unmarried, 20 to 26 and a half years old, and have completed two years of college or the equivalent. If you're accepted, you will learn to fly a U.S. Air Force plane with the best of them. When you've completed pilot training, you'll win your pilot's wings and be commissioned a second lieutenant in the Air Force Reserve. Yes, men, here's a worthwhile career with plenty of action. And get this, as a U.S. Air Force second lieutenant with a rating of a pilot, you'll draw up to $336 cash a month. If flying is in your blood, men, you'll want to take advantage of this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Get your application for aviation cadet pilot training right away at your nearest U.S. Air Force base, or U.S. Air Force Recruiting Station. The curtain rises on Act Two of Destination Found, starring Gail Patrick as Christine Stokes, Ph.D. Christine has arrived at Lark's Point and is being driven up to the school, still quite upset at circumstances in general. I most certainly was. The road was bumpy, the car was jumping, and my nerves were playing leapfrog with each other. Only the young man at the wheel of the car seemed calm and collected. Well, ma'am, the whole town is talking about you coming up here. Folks are really very grateful to you. You're very nice to say so. Do you meet all the trains? Well, not all of them. Sometimes I have a few other things to do. Here's the school now. You see, I'm the county supervisor. You are? Well, it's a pretty small county. Oh, well, I didn't mean it. <laughs> matter of fact, uh, I hired you. Oh, well, then your name is Barnes. That's right. Let me get your bags out of here. I'm sorry if I've been rude, Mr. Barnes. Oh, that's all right. And the name is Jeff. All right, Jeff. Well, here we are. Your living quarters are right there off the schoolroom. Oh, and by the way, this uh, bucket over here is for the roof. When it rains, it leaks pretty badly in one spot. Didn't mean to fix that. Oh, thank you. Where's the kitchen? Right in here. Well, it's nice and clean. Mm-hmm. But you'll have to watch that stovepipe. Oh. I mean to fix that, too, when I get time. 
Pipe falls down, sprays soot all over the place. Oh, I see. I have a telephone. Yeah, that's quite a luxury. How many cubicles will I have? About a hundred, I think. A hundred? Why, this room can't possibly hold a hundred. I'm afraid that's your problem. You see, Miss Stokes... Make it Chris. Thanks. Yeah, that's much friendlier. Well, um, Chris, you'll find that Lark's Point is rather an unpleasant place in some ways. But in others, it's... Well, it's heaven. I know you've made a big sacrifice to come way up here, so I hope you'll sort of look for the, the heaven part. I will, dear. I most certainly will. Well, hello. Hello, Jeff. How are you making out up here? Well, there they are. My charges. Do they look happy? <laughs> well, they certainly do. Of course, there isn't enough room for all of them. I don't know what I'll do when the rainy weather starts. Just have to send some home, I guess. <laughs> we really need a new school, don't we? That's something for you to work on. Oh, I wish it were as easy as you make it sound. Come on in. I want you to see the new curtains I made. Huh? Wow. I didn't know you had it in you. <laughs> I didn't either. Well, it's a pretty color of blue. I almost, uh... Almost match your eyes. Do they? Yeah, they. Really. Well, I. Uh, I got to get down to that stretch of highway. There's a grader on the blink. Oh. My job's a pretty big one, Chris. You'll find yours is too. Yes. Excuse me, Miss Stokes. Can you go to my place? Why, yes, Clark. What is it? Well, the wife's having a baby. I, I can't get no Oh, but I... I've You'll never... have to hurry, please. But, but, but you don't understand, Clark. I, I've never... Well, I'm a school teacher. There isn't anybody else, Miss Stokes. All right, Clark. You stay with the children. I'll go. Oh, here's your baby, Mrs. Clark. Isn't she beautiful? Oh, yes. Oh, I think I hear your husband. I'll be running along now. Oh, thank you, Miss Stokes. Thank you ever so much. Well, I understand you helped bring a new baby into the world. <laughs> That's right. You're really getting on to your job. Oh, I am. And you know, I don't believe I've ever been as happy as I've been here. Not in all my life. <laughs> What's the reason for it? Just looking for that heaven part you spoke of once, I suppose. Is that all? Oh, not quite. I, I suppose this is the first time in my life I've done something for others. Before, everything I did was for myself. Chris, they're having a dance in town tomorrow night. Something special for up here. They're importing a band and everything. Would, uh, would you like to go with me? Oh, I'd love to. I'd love to. <laughs> it was exciting to think of a dance again. And with Jeff... The next morning, I got up early, pressed the only real party dress I'd brought to Lark's Point, and hung it up in the kitchen. It started to rain early that morning. I had to send some of the children home because there just wasn't enough room for all inside. I put the big bucket under the crack in the roof. It was the beginning of a very long day. Hello? Miss Stokes, this is Mrs. Fitch, and I have a complaint to make. Oh, yes, Mrs. Fitch. Did you send my son Wilbur home from school this morning? Yes, I did, Mrs. Fitch. It's raining, and there just isn't enough room inside for everybody. But why is he gone Wilbur? Poor little Wilbur. Well, I had to choose someone, Mrs. Fitch. Next time, maybe Wilbur can stay. But will it be raining like this next time? I'm sorry, but I'll have to say goodbye now, Mrs. Fitch. There's someone at the door. Hello, Christine. How are you, Martha? I'm sorry I kept you waiting. I was on the phone. Come in, won't you? Thank you. Oh, what in the world was that? Oh, I hope it isn't what I think it is. Why, it's the stovepipe in the kitchen. It, it's fallen down. Oh, yes, and look. Soot all over my party dress. <laughs> that night, with the help of a gallon of gasoline and after breaking my neck trying to do it, I got my dress clean. I was waiting for Jeff, feeling good for the first time all day, when the phone rang. Hello? Hello, Chris. Oh, Jeff, where are you? I'm waiting for you. Uh, I'm not going to be able to make it tonight, Chris. Oh, Jeff. Uh, Ed West, a farmer up a ways, has a sick calf. He can't get a vet, so 
I've got to go up and help him. Oh, I'm sorry. You want to ride up with me? Oh, I don't think I'd better. There's always work here I can be doing. Plenty of it. Hello? Christine Stout. Yes? One moment. New York is calling. Oh. Chris. Hello, Chris. Oh, Rod. Oh, darling, I had to call you. I just got back tonight, and I, I had to call you once. Oh, Rod, how wonderful. How did you know I'd need you so tonight? Oh, you are lonely, aren't you? Oh, I am, Rod, I am. I'm about ready to say uncle. Come and get me, Rod. Come and get me. <laughs> So you want to leave Larks Point, Chris? Well, that's, that's right, Jeff. Then your coming up here wasn't that great, benevolent gesture I complimented you on. You might as well know the truth. Say, what is all this cross-examination? You shut up. What? Sit down and keep quiet. All right, you don't have to get so tough. Well, Chris, whether you know it or not, you signed a year's contract. And your replacement has to be approved by me. Oh, that's ridiculous. I can get you a hundred school teachers for this, this hick town. That's it for you to pipe down. Okay, okay. Well, you shouldn't talk like that, Rod. Teachers are terribly hard to find. The kind I want are. Jeff. But I won't try to keep you, Chris. As a matter of fact, I I don't even want any help from you. Just just go. As quickly as you can. Oh, darling, it's so good to be taking you back where you belong. It's it's good to be going. <laughs> Glad to get back to civilization? Sure, I'm glad. <laughs> you know, this this Lark's Point is really the old time low, isn't it? Well, no, it, it had this beautiful part. <laughs> Where? Oh, I don't know exactly, but uh see that house over there? Oh yeah. <laughs> I delivered a baby there. You <laughs> you what? No. Oh, well, what's so funny about that? <laughs> it just strikes me funny, that's all. <laughs> I guess it would at that. <laughs> Hey, what's that up ahead? It's the road grader. Oh, yes. Looks like that corny, dramatic friend of yours is driving it. Well, Donna, you can wave goodbye to him. Turn the car around, Rod. What? I said turn the car around. I'm going back. But why? I'm staying. You're, you're what? I'm staying, Rod. Oh, you're crazy, Chris. No, I'm not. Take me back. Are you kidding? Very well, I... I see you aren't. All right, if you want to get out, you can get out right here. All right, Rod. Oh, Chris, Chris, do you know what you're doing? For the first time in my life. Hey there. What are you doing here? Looking for a ride back to town. <laughs> well, climb on up. I thought you were going the other way. I thought so, too, for a moment. Well, I'm glad you changed your mind. Are you? Oh, Jeff, are you really? Of course I am. I'm sorry, Jeff. Sorry? For what? For getting off the track. Oh, you didn't, Chris, not really. Oh, Jeff, I know what was wrong. What, Chris? Well, my mother tried to make sure I'd find the happiness that she had missed, and she sacrificed everything for me. She worked so hard, and, and yet it seemed that even she didn't know the answer. I thought my happiness was with Rod and his life and his world, but... That was all an illusion. I didn't find it until I came up here. Not until that day you told me to look only for the for the heaven part of things. Oh, Chris. I lost sight of it, Jeff. But it was only for a moment. Of course it was. Don't let me lose sight of it again. Curtain falls on the final act of Destination Found. Our star, Gail Patrick, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. Veterans, here's a great opportunity for those of you who can qualify. Eight well-known U.S. Army outfits are looking for top-flight men. If you have served outside the United States after September 1st, 1945, you can now enlist directly for any one of the following. The 2nd, 4th, 5th, and 9th Infantry Divisions, 2nd and 3rd Armored, 2nd Engineer Special Brigade, and the famous 82nd Airborne Division. These outfits are all in this country, and as long as your record is good, you'll stay with the unit you have chosen for at least three years. 
And here's something special for you men who served at any time with the 3rd Infantry Division. You have priority on enlisting directly for the 7th Infantry Regimental Combat Team, stationed at Fort Benning, Georgia. And veterans, no matter which unit you choose, some of you will be able to enlist in grade depending on your skill and length of service. Ask now at your U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station about special enlistment features for ex-servicemen. And now once again, our star, Gail Patrick, and our producer. She's one of the most charming and talented members of the movie Colony, and one of the most generous with her time. I refer, of course, to our proudly we hail star, Gail Patrick. As always, Gail, you're swell. And you're very generous, E.P. Thank you. Gail, I don't have to ask you what's occupying your spare time these days. Your famous children's shop, the Enchanted Cottage in Beverly Hills, must keep you very busy. Oh, indeed it does. But the Enchanted Cottage is my hobby, you know, so it's really more fun than work. What do you have there at the Enchanted Cottage? Oh, we have books and toys and clothes for children all ages up to 12. And I understand with the youngsters, it's quite the most popular place in Beverly Hills. <laughs> what do you serve, bubble gum? Oh, not quite, C.P. We have all kinds of things for the children to play with, and we encourage their playing with them. Then that's the reason. But they tell me Jerry Fairbanks made a movie short of The Enchanted Cottage. That's right, he did. It was called Film Tot Fairyland, and we're very proud of it. I would be, too. And it's destined, of course, for an Academy Award. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> With the youngsters we mentioned, of course. Could be. Well, Gail, if we're ever in need of an erector set, we'll be out. And now, our thanks again for your performance here on Proudly We Hail. It's always a pleasure working with you, C.P. But now, before I get away, how does your playbill read for next time? For next week's program, we're happy to announce we have a gay comedy on tap. It's called The Rainmaker. And our star will be that motion picture favorite, John Hodiak. He's one of my favorites, so I'll be sure to listen. Thanks again, and goodbye. Goodbye, Gail Patrick. Goodbye. Thanks for coming down. Be sure to join us next week, ladies and gentlemen, when we present the gay comedy, The Rainmaker, starring John Hodiak. Until then, thanks for listening, and cheerio from Hollywood. Gail Patrick appeared for the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars on this program. The story was by Rich Hall, with the orchestra directed by Eddie Scrivener. Remember, proudly we hail next time presents John Hodier. This program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking. <laughs>